I just hit day 78 of eating a meat only diet, beef, butter, bacon, eggs. For 78 days, I feel absolutely amazing. Here's a couple of quick updates. I do a video like this every Tuesday and number one, I'm down 40 pounds, but I care nothing about the weight I've lost. That is just a small little bit of the changes in my life that have occurred. Besides losing all of the weight, I have no aches or pains anymore. That has been life changing for me. For years, I've had lower back pain. For the last year and a half, I had this horrible arthritis in my toe. They were going to do surgery on it. That pain is almost completely gone. The pain in my back is gone. The inflammation I used to get in my elbows is gone. No more aches, no more pains. The uh, brain fog is also gone. I have much more clarity. My cognitive ability is through the roof now compared to before. I mentioned it in my previous video. I watched Jeopardy every single day before carnivore and after carnivore, and I'm just killing it. I just watched a video off by Dr. Jordan Peterson. And so I've only been eating meat for beef, fundamentally, for almost five years now. Talking about his cognitive ability on the carnivore diet, he's been doing it for several years now. And he was saying he truly believes, he can't prove it, but he truly believes his ability to read has increased significantly. When I started this carnivore diet, that reversed. And I can now, I think, I actually think this is true. I think I can read faster and more efficiently than I could when I was in my 20s. It's much better on carnivore versus what it was before. I totally see that because I was in a brain fog before. I was stumbling and stuttering to find my words before. Now I can do a video like this and I can riff for 20 minutes without one cut or one edit. I could never do that before. The other big game changer for me has been my sleep. I mentioned this before, Dr. Jordan Peterson, the first week he stopped snoring, I hear anecdotes from many other people that stopped snoring or had sleep apnea. That was a huge change for me. The very first day on carnivore diet, I know it's unbelievable, I stopped snoring. My wife was punching me and clubbing me at night saying, roll over or do something because you're snoring like a chainsaw. Just got a comment on my channel, very similar to my experience. This man was getting hit by his wife and he started carnivore. He's not getting beat up by his wife anymore. So that's an awesome benefit of carnivore diet. For me, it happened on the first day. Now, I don't know if that was because I reduced my inflammation or because I started supplementing with some electrolytes in my water. Very important to get a lot of water, as you can see here when you're on the carnivore diet. But I stopped snoring. I haven't snored in 78 days. I've been sleeping like a baby. I've been waking up relaxed and rejuvenated every single morning for 78 days. Complete game changer. Sleep is critical. It's the most important thing we can do. And so many people out there, I've said it before, I'll say it one more time. They're just like, yeah, I got eight hours of sleep. I'm good. The number of hours of sleep you get makes no difference. You can get 20 hours of horrible sleep and you can do that over and over and over again for days, weeks, months, and years until you're walking around like a depressed, anxious zombie with zero confidence whatsoever. How do I know that? Because that was me. I was on every antidepressant and SSRI and I believe it was because I was walking around like a zombie, not getting any sleep for years and years and years. It weakens your immune system when you don't have proper sleep. I haven't been sick, I haven't had a cold, and I get seasonal allergies every year living on this property for eight years now. None of it. I was mowing the lawn the other day, all this yellow pollen all over everything. I would have been sneezing and my eyes would have been watering. I don't get that anymore on carnivore diet. I know all of this sounds amazing. I'm not trying to be the Billy Mays of carnivore and sell you carnivore. I don't care what you do. I'm just trying to put my truthful, honest, Results out there. Maybe someone else out there was hopeless like I was and maybe this is something to explore and research But I'm not telling you. Oh, you go do the carnivore diet What I would tell you is you become the captain of your own ship You do your own research and you figure out what's best for you. Nobody else is gonna do it for you So the sleep that has been a huge game changer for me the arthritis in my foot's gone. My gum health I talked about before I went to the dentist I had no inflammation my teeth feel great. They were always kind of scummy before and I always would have toothaches and I'd get headaches, no pain, my, my mouth just feels wonderful. You deserve to feel the way I feel with zero inflammation. That is one of the biggest game changers. There's so much misinformation out there about you're going to eat meat, you're going to, cholesterol is going to go up and you're going to have a heart attack. It's the inflammation that's getting people and I can see it in so many people now. I'm not judging people, I'm just, I have a lot of empathy and I think that's what I used to be like. You go in the grocery store and you see people and their faces red and puffy and their fingers are fat and puffy and they're, they're sore and they're achy, it's, it's inflammation. And if you see that on the outside of your body, my goodness, imagine what's going on 
in the inside of your body. So those are some of my big updates. The biggest thing for me has been my children and the reason I started carnivore diet. My daughter Lily, who's 18, had horrible HS. And so after I tested carnivore out, and I was a guinea pig, I did it myself for a while. I suggested to Lily, I said, hey, I'm not telling you to eat meat for 30 days. I'm telling you to stop eating all of these other foods and maybe you can get rid of this horrible, painful skin condition she had all over her chest and back for years. After seeing multiple dermatologists, they threw pill and pill after her and creams and everything and none of it worked. A couple days on carnivore, it was around day eight, her, whole, her back started clearing up. She did carnivore with me for 30 days. It almost completely went away. Well, just life changing, her face cleared up, she lost a bunch of weight, her mood improved. And then the other big news, this is just a quick update because there's so many people that watch my channel that have never been here before. Something like 90% of you people have never heard my story or been here before. My daughter, Emma, was a vegan for five years and she went carnivore with me. I'm on day 78, 28 days ago. Completely life-changing. She's gonna do a 30-day update. She switched from being a vegan to being a carnivore. She switched from being pale, fatigued, sickly, sleeping all the time and napping to having more energy than any kid her age I know. She is full of energy. She's full of life. She had acne on her face like a lot of teenagers get. It's going away. Why do a lot of teenagers get acne? Well, there's hormones. I'm sure there's a lot of things working into it, but a big, huge part of it is your diet. And how do I know that? Why? Because look at Emma. She's changed her diet. That's the only thing she's changed. It's changing everything. Maybe it's changing her hormones and that's changing it, or maybe it's just the food she's eating and inflammation's down, but her face is completely clearing up. She's got energy, she's got life again, and she's eating the proper human diet like she should be. One of the things I really wanted to talk about that I'm excited about is all of those health benefits and weight loss, it, it's been amazing. It's been completely life-changing. And so I'm starting a documentary movie. A lot of you may not know about this, but I wanted to give you a few quick updates on the documentary movie. So I created a website, and it's called carnivoredietmovie.com. And on that website, if you want to participate, this is what I want to do with the documentary. I want to follow real people for one year. Real people. Lots of real people. Not just obese people. People that have diabetes. People that are arthritic. People that have autoimmune issues. Uh, people that have brain fog, depression, and anxiety. I want to follow a ton of people, as many as we can, for one year. And I want to document their journey on carnivore diet. And I want to show the middle beginning, middle, and end of their whole journey. And I want to have expert doctors on there as well. But I don't want the whole focus to be on the doctors. I want it to be more on the people and the examples. I just want to put examples out there. And it, I want it to be truthful. I want it to be honest. I want it to be fact-based. I just want to get the word out there because I know there's so many other people out there that were hopeless like I was. And when you're hopeless and you're at the end of the road and you have no other answer, and here's this huge answer. This would have changed my life if I knew about this 20 years ago. This would have changed so many lives. I imagine all of the things with my children and family could have been just drastically improved if I knew about this way of living 20 years ago. I know there's so many other people out there like that. I just want to put the example out there. and I'm not telling them to do it, but they can see the example. They're the captain of their own ship. They can decide what they want to do with it, if it's right for them, if they want to test it out. Maybe they want to go vegan even. I don't care. I'm not judging anybody, but if you're going to take control of your ship and you're gonna say, I'm the captain now, I'm in control. That's what it's all about. And uh, boy, have I been in control for 78 days now more than ever. That's one of the biggest changes with carnivore diet that I never would have expected. Complete control. I was a slave to my food before. It was always, what are we gonna eat? What are we gonna do? What's for dinner tonight? Everything was food. You go to a birthday party, a graduation, holiday events, it's all food, 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 food. The food has complete control of your life. I'm in complete control. I don't even care about the food anymore. It's just for sustenance now. It's not for entertainment anymore. And when you get to that point, boy, is it amazing. The amount of time wasted on that stuff before is crazy. I, I cook a steak for 15 minutes. You know, 25 minutes later, the steak's cooked and I've already eaten and I'm cleaning my dish and I'm on to the rest of my life. The other part about carnivore that's crazy is confidence, fearlessness, lack of anxiety, lack of depression. I had clinical depression, I was on every SSRI. Nothing did anything for me. Those pills did nothing for me but make me into a zombie. Carnivore and getting proper sleep and my um, hormones and everything are more well regulated now because I'm eating the proper cholesterol that's been demonized our entire lives. I feel amazing and I don't have an inkling, not one. 
Some people describe depression when it's really horrible. It's like you're in a storm and it's just raining down and it's just a horrible thunderstorm with hail and rain and you can't even stand up. You can't get out of bed. And then sometimes the depression would subside a little bit and you just have a little bit of rain or a little bit of drizzle. And then for me throughout my life, sometimes it would go down and maybe it was just a really dark cloud and it's just like a crummy day out. Right now, when I look up in the sky, for the last 78 days, 100% truth, there hasn't been one cloud in the sky. It's been nothing but sunny skies and amazing. When you walk around and you don't have any anxiety and you don't, you're fearless, life is so much better. I'm talking to so many people I would have been scared to talk to before. I'm making friends with people. I'm making real human connections with people, both online and offline. My wife and family and I purchased our small town movie theater. It's been almost eight months now. My family and I purchased this small town movie theater. It's a single screen theater in a historic building. So many people have been coming into the theater. This lady came in the other day and she's like, I came in because I saw your YouTube video. I was like, oh, that's awesome. You, what, did you see my homesteading video or did you see one that I did on the theater? Because when we took over the theater, I've done a whole bunch of videos. My family taking over and reopening the single screen theater. I think the videos are awesome. It's just like such an adventure with my family. So go check them out if you're interested. But I said to this woman, I was like, oh, you must have seen one of the movie theater videos I did a couple weeks ago because lately I've been doing more carnivore videos. She said, no, I saw your carnivore video and it was amazing. In one of my carnivore videos, at the end of the video, I just mentioned the movie theater briefly. So she came in for that reason. I had a 78 year old man call me this week and almost put me in tears. I was so excited. Tears of happiness, tears of joy. This man has been on carnivore for years. I keep hearing stories like this over and over again of people in their 70s and 80s that have been doing carnivore for years. One second. So many people in their 70s and 80s that have been doing carnivore for years and years. Carnivore is way more prevalent than you or I would ever have imagined. And I... It, why? Because people are in the closet. They don't want to talk about it. They're shamed. They're like, oh, you're going to die of a heart attack. We just had a graduation. I just heard it over and over again. What are you doing? You got to eat vegetables. Are you insane? And meanwhile, frankly, it's usually from people that are really unhealthy. And I think what they're doing is they're kind of subconsciously knowing, like they're second guessing themselves. Like maybe I'm doing something wrong, but, and then, then they fight back and they go over the top against someone else. Like you shouldn't be doing this and they should be pointing the finger at themselves really. Those people are eating donuts and they're eating cakes and they're having their little snacks and they know it's bad for them, but they can't stop. We are living in a world of addicts. This is one of my big revelations since I did my last Tuesday talk update. I do one of these videos every Tuesday. Go check some of them out. I'm going to make a playlist for them now. This is my big revelation. Me, myself, I'm not telling you what to do. Me, myself, I will never in the rest of my life God willing, it's a long life. Maybe I live another year and I die and get hit by a bus. Who knows? The rest of my life, I will never eat sugar or processed food junk again my entire life. I have completely made that decision. And it's like a no brainer. I, it's just like I had to say it to myself. I was like, well, of course I'm not. But making that statement is powerful because uh, I see a lot of people that start carnivore and they're like, well, I, I'll do it, but I, I'm not giving up my uh, fruit. I'm not, I, I love strawberries. I'm still going to eat those strawberries. They're kind of lower on carb. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. You do you. I'm not judging anybody. Whatever works for me. If I had one strawberry, I would be, I'd be done. I can't. I binge eat. I can't do it in moderation. I, the strawberry would lead to some watermelon would lead to some bread, would lead to some donuts, would lead to me eating an entire birthday cake at the end of the weekend, justifying, well, I'll start again on Monday. <clears throat> I'll just binge myself and put every piece of garbage I possibly can into my body for the entire weekend. And then on Monday, I'll start again. And it'll, by the way, it'll take me months to work all that off again. But for me, it's all or nothing. For me, I look at it this way. I was a horrible addict. And like I said before, sugar is more addictive than cocaine. It's more addictive. And when you look at an MRI, someone on hard drugs, sugar lights up just the same way as a hard drug does. And we're living in a world where everyone is an addict. Everyone, including children. We're giving children little juice boxes and cookies and grandma gives them candy and you reward them and trick or treat. Here's your candy. You go to the grocery store. Every item in it is full of the drug that I've been addicted to my entire life. You go to a baseball stadium or a football stadium with 70,000 people, almost every one of those people, they're addicts. They're addicted to something. I am no longer an addict. And for that, for that reason, I'm never going to have a cheat day. 
I hear a lot of people say, well, I'm gonna have a cheat day or, you know, I'm gonna mess up here or there. Like they go into it saying, I can, it's okay if I mess up. And I'm not judging you, you do you. And of course, if you mess up, jump back up and start again. But I, I can't go into this saying to myself, I'm gonna do this, but on Saturdays, I'm gonna have a little cheat day. Uh, because if I was addicted to a hard drug my entire life and I was able to overcome that, after 42 years, and I overcame that, and my life completely changed. My sleep improved, my weight, my weight loss, uh, my weight dropped. My arthritis went away. My whole body feels a million times better. My relationships with my family and friends is all improved. All of those things are fixed. Why would I go back and say, I'm gonna just take a little cocaine, just a little bit, just today, I deserve a little bit. I know it's not gonna be worth it. I've yo-yoed on keto for years. I used to do keto, and I would do a cheat day on Saturdays. Countless times, dozens of times, probably a hundred cheat days I've had in my life. I've done diets for years now. Not one time did I do a cheat day and afterwards said, oh gee, that felt great. I feel so much better about myself now. It's never happened. So that's me. I'm doing me. I'm the captain of my own ship. You need to be the captain of your own ship. Biggest advice I have for people. Don't just say, that's it. I'm starting carnivore diet. I'm going to buy steaks. You have to be the captain of your own ship. Before this, you were laying on the ground in the fetal position while your Twinkies and your donuts and your food were driving the ship into a storm, into a hurricane. You're crashing the ship into the rocks and you weren't paying any attention. Well, before you get up off the ground and you take control of the ship, you need to know how to drive the ship. You need to know how to fuel the ship. You need to know how to navigate the ship. And that information is not just going out and eating steaks. Dr. Barry, I'm not affiliated with him. I don't get anything for promoting him. He changed my life. His videos are amazing. This is free information that has changed my life forever. How to start the keto diet, how to start the carnivore diet, how to carnivore mistakes, carnivore 101. His carnivore mistakes video will save you so much pain and agony because people are going to jump into carnivore and they're going to get the horrible keto flu. Keto flu can be avoided, my friends. It's not just water eater. There's electrolytes. It's just not water eater. That was my Wisconsin accent. It's just not water either. There's electrolytes, there's certain types of meat you have to eat, there's certain things you can do. Do the research, understand what you're getting into. It's free information out there. You become a master of your ship and then you take control of your ship. This is the most important thing I wanted to talk about with you today. Before I started Carnivore Diet, one thing that had started improving or changing my life slightly was learning more about Stoicism. Now before you're, you start cringing and thinking, is this guy trying to pass some religion onto me or something? Stoicism is not a religion. It's a philosophy. It's just a way of life. It's some guidelines like, hey, if you follow these things, maybe you'll have a better life. It goes way, way back, way back into the day. And I started learning about it before and it's really helped me out. Uh, um, there's four virtues of Stoicism. I'm going to talk to you about those and I've got them memorized because I'm a carnivore now and my brain is just like, it's like a steel trap. Before I talk about the four virtues or tenets of Stoicism, I'm going to give you an example. This is the best one. So we just had a big graduation party here. We had about 100 family members. Now you, imagine yourself when you have a Thanksgiving or some holiday and you have family over. There's always that one person that just drives you insane. Think about that person right now. For me, since I learned about Stoicism, nobody can drive me insane anymore. So my wife has this too. There's just one person. She says it all the time. They just drive me nuts. They make me so, so mad. Nobody can make me mad because of Stoicism. And here's one of the things that Stoicism talks about. Nobody can make me mad. I choose in my brain whether or not to get mad or not. Outside external forces can literally, physically, scientifically, they cannot make me mad. It's me choosing in my brain to get upset about something and to let it linger and to let it fester and to let it bother me. I could just choose to let it just wash away like warm water and forget about it completely. I could choose in my head to say, yes, that person could irritate some people, but they're not going to irritate me. Maybe that person is so irritating to some people because they have some mental disorder. You know, maybe they, maybe they had some huge trauma in their life that I'm not even aware of and that's why they're behaving that way and now it's justifiable. But in any case, why would I let it make me mad? That's one of the things I love about stoicism that's so powerful. I've said this in my videos before I started carnivore, but Stoicism on carnivore is supercharged. These four tenets or virtues of Stoicism going hand in hand with carnivore, they will change your life. I am telling you, my life is a million times better. I want for nothing. If you had a lottery ticket for a billion dollars, I'm ripping it up right now. I've said it before and people said I'm a liar. 
That's a hundred percent truth on my children, the most valuable thing to me in the world, on a Bible, on my children, on everything. You gave me a lottery ticket right now, psh, rip it up. I don't want anything to do with it. I want for nothing. Stoicism and carnivore together make for an amazing life. So there's four tenets of stoicism. The first one is courage. And how does that apply? We'll talk about all four of them, but let's talk about courage. How does courage apply to carnivore diet? Well, you gotta be real courageous. Dr. Barry's one of the most courageous people I know. You have to be real courageous if you're gonna go against everyone and the entire earth. Everyone is addicted to sugar, carbs, and everyone has this myth that if you eat meat, you're gonna die. And everyone is basically, eight billion people are just sprinting down a road with their Slurpees and their donuts in their hand, and at the end of that road is a big cliff, and you're just one person. Imagine that you're looking overhead, bird's eye view down, you just see all these ants just barreling off a cliff. You're one person, and you're standing there like this in the opposite direction, saying stop or wait, and then you're walking off the side of the road into the scary dark forest all by yourself. That takes courage to do that. Courage and carnivore go hand in hand. And I tell you, everyone that starts carnivore, they have courage because it goes against everything you've ever been told and it takes courage in order to be able to do that. So courage is a number one tenant of stoicism. Number two is wisdom. Oh my God, don't get me started on wisdom. When you're ready to rip up that lottery ticket with me, you're starting to understand wisdom a little bit better. If I could have one tenth of one millionth percent of wisdom more in my body instead of a billion dollars, I would take it in a second. Wisdom is the most, most important thing out of anything. Wisdom allows you to make the proper decisions going through life. And here's the one thing I will leave you with. I tell my children this all the time if you watch my channel. I don't know if I made this up or where I heard it or what, but I tell them this. Your life is a result of the decisions you make. Not the outside factors. It's all of the decisions you make. So if you're having a great life and you're happy, it's because of the decisions you made. If you're having a horrible life, it's because of the decisions you made. There's outside factors and there's things that come into play. Now, I could have an uh, asteroid come hit, crash down into my yard and a piece come off and it blows my leg off. I could decide that that's the most horrible thing and it's so unfair now, I only have one leg and I'm only able to walk on one leg. That would be my decision to make in my brain. Or I could make the decision, my goodness, I'm so thankful, I'm so grateful and I'm so happy, I'm still alive. So many other people could have died from that and I'm still alive and I'm gonna do something with my life now. So wisdom, it's one of the most important things. That's two of the tenets, courage, wisdom. Another one is justice, justice. Oh my goodness, this is a big one for carnivore on so many levels. I hate it when things are unfair. I hate it so much when things are unfair. In fact, bullies, I hate bullies. One of the things I've taught my children, first of all, you're never gonna be a bully, ever. But I teach them to be the exact opposite. I've said to the girls the first day they started school and every day the first day of school every year, if you're in the lunchroom and there's a kid sitting alone, so help me, you guys better walk over there and you're gonna sit and you're gonna eat lunch with that person that's eating alone. Never be a bully and I, I just hate injustice. One of the biggest injustices right now is our food. So, and I don't think there's one person out there that's being a bully and saying, hey, all you people should eat this sugar and eat this garbage and eat this food and it's, it's some evil entity that's trying to do it. I don't think that's the case. It's just greed and money. And we live in the richest country in the world for all time, the most prosperous. And it's because we have free markets and we have a lot of freedom and business and it's encouraged. And most of that is wonderful. We have all this technology and all of these things because of it. But one thing that's overlooked, it's been health. It's been this. The reason the standard American diet is so bad is very simple. It's just money. People are addicted and it brings in money, and it brings in more money, and it brings in more money. Where does the justice come into this is, I, I truly feel guilty. People should feel as good as I do, and there's an injustice out there because a lot of you don't because so many people are addicted to sugar and carbs, and they're gonna walk around their whole lives like a zombie with inflammation and brain fog, and they're never gonna feel, feel this, and that's an injustice. And so I am going to try to turn that around. The other part of justice I'll mention real quickly is being ethical, right? 
Where are we sourcing our meat from? That's why my daughter, Emma, who's a carnivore, she will not eat anything, and that's why I called her the Compassionate Carnivore. We started making those t-shirts. You could purchase the t-shirts, link in the description below. Every penny from those t-shirts goes to the carnivore documentary movie. Emma and I aren't taking a single penny from that. It's all going to help people, that's all it is. And so we're compassionate carnivores. I get most of my meat from my neighbor. I drive past the cows every day. They have great humane lives. He's um, putting them back and forth between their fields. They're in green pastures. They have a long life and they have a good life and they're treated well and they have a painless death and I get 400 meals from one cow. So justice. So we have courage, wisdom, justice, and then the last tenet of stoicism is temperance. And temperance is the last one where I got cut off, my battery died on my camera. Temperance. Temperance applies so much to carnivore. Temperance is similar to moderation. So doing something with good balance. And boy, does that apply to me because prior to the carnivore diet, when I was doing the standard American diet, I had no temperance. I had no moderation. I had these massive ups and downs, and you did too if you were eating sugar. Maybe not as extreme as mine were, but you'd have a little bit of, uh, maybe some toast with some jelly on it for breakfast, and then like two hours later, oh my goodness, I'm starving. I need a granola bar. I need a banana. All full of sugar again, of course, and then up and down and up and down, and there was no moderation. On carnivore, my diet is completely moderated. There's none of those ups or downs. It's just flat. Yesterday, I ate one time. I had burger patties and some bacon. And that was all I ate the whole day. And it wasn't an hour later where all of a sudden I'm feeling hungry again. I had no hunger pains and no thought of hunger after that. Eat until you're comfortably full and that's it. But this idea of temperance and moderation applies to everything in my life now, 78 days on carnivore diet as compared to before. Everything is so much more well balanced. I, I don't have the ups and downs in my mood. Those are more moderate, um, but my mood has been excellent, but it's been steady. None of this, just shh, nice and steady. The weight loss, steady, down. But um, none of these big uh, roller coaster ups and downs, peaks and valleys. My mood, my weight loss, just everything in my life is more well-balanced on carnivore. I said it earlier, I'll say it again. When you live without inflammation and you live with zero anxiety and zero fear, your life will be so much better. And the justice in it is you deserve to live that way too. So those are the four tenets of Stoicism. If you're interested in learning more, it's just, it's just a philosophy. It's just an idea. There's a guy on YouTube, Ryan Holiday. He's got some pretty good videos on it, some really good books about it as well. And again, just that one analogy, nobody can make me mad. That's a powerful way to live your life. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Again, if you're interested in helping others, check out the new website, carnivoredietmovie.com. I'll leave a link in the description below. You can purchase t-shirts below. You can join Homestead Howe as a member. We've got a bunch of people that joined. It's just a couple dollars a month. Every penny of that, if you joined, goes towards the Carnivore doc Diet documentary movie and you get all sorts of extra perks. So those guys have been getting all sorts of information before everyone else. I did a big outline on what the movie's gonna be. They're getting access to that first. Emma's posting pictures and updates of her carnivore experience. People that are members and have joined get that. And again, we're not doing it to make money. I don't get a penny off of it. It all goes towards the carnivore diet movie. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you like that, please check out my 30 day carnivore video. I've got lots of references from doctors and examples from other people in there. That video has almost half a million views. It was gonna be my only video that I've ever done on carnivore, but it's gone so popular and I've gotten so much inspiration and comments from people asking to do more. I'm gonna continue doing more. So thanks a lot for watching. Have a great day. And remember, be the captain of your own ship. It's such a great way to live your life.